My name is Christian Brat Thompson. I'm a Danish film director, and I've made a film on Rainer Werner Fassbinder, who, uh, in my eyes, together with Alfred Hitchcock, is the most important film director in the world. So you met Fassbinder for the very first time here in Berlin at the Berlin International Film Festival? Yeah. How did you meet him? How did you get to know him? Well, his first film, Love is Colder Than Death, were booed out uh, and I loved the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I saw him sitting alone at a bar and I thought, uh, well, he needs some comfort because he was 24 year old and was completely booed out here in Berlin. So I went up to him and said thank you for the film. Mm -hmm. And he didn't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> But he knew exactly what he was going to do the next 13 years. Mm -hmm. But then you actually developed a friendship with yes. him as well. Yes. And um, I mean, he wasn't always the easiest person, but he was a very fascinating person, as I understood from your movie. Was that actually part of the fascination that he wasn't like a smooth, easy character? Probably, yes. He was, you know, it was both by luck and, uh, of course, lack of luck. I, since I lived in Copenhagen and he lived everywhere in Germany, then we met maybe, you know, two or three times a year. Always when he was shooting films or directing theatre. Uh, and this, you know, sort of friendship at a distance I guess meant that um, he was never cruel really towards me as he was to those who were closer to him. So that may be some kind of luck. Maybe I also, of course, wanted a closer relationship, but I knew that <laughs> that would uh, also create problems because he could not be friends with someone, uh, well, he always started to quarrel when, uh, with people who were close to him. And I think I was close, but not that close. Mm -hmm. But, well, you also have, in the movie, you, said, you talk about it, you also have this moment where you actually became father. Yes. And he was very angry about that. And I had the feeling in this moment in the movie, that the movie becomes very personal. And what did it mean to you to make a movie not just about Fassbinder, but actually about one of your friends? I don't think I can distinguish, really. But it was a hard moment when I told him that I was going to have a child because well he, well, he said to me, then you haven't understood shit about my films. Uh, I mean, to put children into this cruel world. But then later I found out, well, I found out two things. First thing was that he really was so jealous because he wanted a child of his own. And uh, none of his uh, girlfriends would give him a child. <laughs> they would give him everything but not a child. That was one thing I learned, but another thing which uh, is probably more important is that I found out how childish he was himself. Uh, he was a child, uh, but he was also, you know, the most grown-up person you can imagine. So it was okay <laughs> that uh, he was a child also. But this was a very strange contradiction, to be so childish and at the same time to be like a wise old man. From what I saw in the movie, I very often had the feeling that he is 
or that he could be very childish in his relationships, yeah. but that he was extremely mature in the movies. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, yeah. But maybe this also had to go together. Maybe yes. you needed to be a child to make this kind of movies. Yes, I think... Uh, well, generally, I think that being an artist means to have uh, contact with the child in yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you say that he also, well, that he changed you, not just by, by his movies, but also by his personality? Did he awaken your child? Because you also make movies now, you, yeah. you work as a filmmaker. Yeah. Was that because of his inspiration? No, it was not. Uh, I was, well, the year I met him, I had just finished the film school in Copenhagen. And, uh, well, Fassbender was not my uh, great teacher in filmmaking. That was Jean-Luc Godard. Mm -hmm. Godard was my favorite up during the, the 60s. But then uh, I think Godard went crazy in 68, mm -hmm. like so many others did. Uh, and then Fassbender took over. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure I learned very much from Fassbinder. I learned more from Godard because, you know, Fassbinder always wanted his films to be so prepared, so exact. He hated improvising. He never improvised. Whereas I loved to improvise, and I learned that from uh, Godard, mm -hmm. who always was unprepared at a set. Fassbinder was so prepared and he knew exactly what he wanted. That's why he could, you know, shoot a feature film in, uh, in a week. Mm -hmm. But I think you saw that very well in the scene where he's shooting for Berlin Alexanderplatz. Yes, yes. And the car needed to be in exactly that spot, in yeah. exactly that second, <laughs> otherwise he wouldn't take the shot. Yes, right. <laughs> I wouldn't give a damn if the car was a few seconds late or not, but uh, for him it was important. But if you say that Fassbinder wasn't the person who taught you how to shoot movies, what was the fascinating part about his movies for you then? What made them so, so great in your eyes? Well, in a way I think he uh, invented film language again. You know, in 68 or 69, when he shot his first film, or his first four films, uh, cinema was so corrupt. I mean, the Hollywood language was dead. It consisted of cliches. And in this period, Fassbinder started making movies from scratch. I mean, his first film, or first two films, the camera doesn't move, and he very rarely cuts. Uh, he, when he finds an image, he uh, keeps that image, uh, which means you can really go into the image and experience what an image is. And then when he, after two or three minutes, finally cuts, you can also almost physically feel, oh, that's a cut. Mm -hmm. And uh, much of his first film was uh, in silence. People didn't speak much, but then when they finally spoke, you took it serious. Mm -hmm. But Well, you said that it was different from the corrupted Hollywood system, but at the same time it was highly influenced by Hollywood. Mm. Well, in a strange way, uh, The only cinema that Fassbender took serious was Hollywood. But the old Hollywood films, the Hollywood films of his childhood in the um, 50s, which means uh, Alfred Hitchcock, Howard Hawks, and uh, Douglas Sirk later. But, um, well, he did not make films to imitate Hitchcock or Howard Hawks, but uh, he uh, sort of, well, it's difficult to say, but but then when he uh, experienced, when he discovered Douglas Sirk, 
that meant that Fassbinder went out of his very avant-garde way of making films. Then Dr. Sirk taught him the importance of making films to a larger audience. Mm -hmm. That was something very, very important for Fassbinder. But at the same time, he uh, kept his uh, very personal style while approaching a larger audience. Mm. But, well, how was it for you? Were there movies that you actually didn't like that he made? Did, would you say that by trying to reach a broader audience also he became corrupt, commercialized, or didn't you, or would you say you don't see that in his movies? He didn't become corrupt, but uh, there are a few of his films I don't like that much. One is Lili Marlene, mm -hmm. which it wasn't his own idea to shoot that film. He was asked by the producer, Luki Waldleiner, to, sh Waldlein, not to shoot uh, Lili Marlene. And uh, his heart was not there. I think he did it in order to become friends with the great producers. In that way, you can say that Lili Marlene was an opportunistic film. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like it that much. I, I don't like a film like Despair either. These are, you know, his uh, great international productions. I think he loses something there. I like his small and cheap films much better. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, this is something I learned from Godard and Francois before in the, when something that inspired me to make films. They said you have to make films in handwriting. You have to be as personal and intimate as when you write a love letter. Mm -hmm. I guess that's also where the term comes from of uh, author cinema, to yes. be an author in uh, right. cinema. Right. And I think maybe Fassbinder lost some of his handwriting when he tried to make those big international productions. Hmm. In the movie, you also talk about Fassbinder's relationships with men, yeah. which were all very difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. How was that? Talking about this, these relationships with the men. How did you experience those relationships as his friend? Would he talk with you about that? Um, no, not much, actually. But of course. When I was together with him, there always was a male lover also, whom I came to love and respect a great deal also. He had this, his official lovers were very, very sweet and gentle uh, persons. And, uh, well, the funny thing is, when, he had, when they had been lovers for a couple of months, they, s they suddenly got the leading part in mm -hmm. one of them his films because that was the only way he could, he could see his uh, lovers if they were in his films. Mm -hmm. Because he was working the whole He day. was working all the time, yes. Mm -hmm. Shooting all the time. Which was also probably something that in the end destroyed him in a way because he yeah. invested so much energy into these movies yeah. Yeah. that he died at a very young age. Yes, but like his close friend and collaborator Harry Bear said, he said he died from an overdose of work, mm. which I think is true. Mm. And just quickly to come back to the topic of his relationship with man, in an interview scene in the movie, he's asked about the depiction of homosexuality in movies. Yeah. And he says, it's always a wrong depiction. Yes. Because you always have to choose for one. Right. And, um, well, what would you say about the depiction of Rainer Werner Fassbinder's homosexuality in this movie? In my film? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really think the film is about his homosexuality. Of course, it's mentioned, but uh, like he says himself, and this is something he says about all his films that take place in homosexual milieus, he says, they are not really about homosexuality. They are about, they are always, he says, about Abhängigkeit. Mm -hmm. 
what is the English word? Dependency. Dependency, yes. Yes. That's what his films are about. Not if they take place in homo or heterosexual milieus is not that important because uh, he thinks that people are all the same. Mm. So it's rather about basic human relationships yes, than about... That's, that's right, yeah. 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 And uh, I would say my film about Fassbinder is the same. Mm -hmm. I was a bit astonished maybe <laughs> when I saw the finished film how little a part homosexuality played in the film, but I'm sure Fassbinder would have uh, appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Well, the part about human relationships, on the other hand, is very big. I mean, that yes. is the essential part. So yes. Yes. That is in there. Yeah. How is it for you now to be back at the Berlin International Film Festival, where you first met Fassbinder, and now you're screening your movie here about Fassbinder? It's very moving. Well, um, but well, the movie is very good, I have to say. So I can definitely recommend it to everyone. Um, it is very well. I'm very thankful for you. Uh, I'm, I thank you very much that you made this movie because it's a very personal movie. It's a very personal insight to his life. And um, well, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you.